Hey kids, it's Jesse James, and on this Jesse James Explains, we're looking at marine reptiles. So, one of the big ideas is dinosaurs, many of them can swim. We see um, tracks. So, you know, you're walking into a pool or a lake and you're walking, and then the water, as it, it begins to drop, you kind of start walking on your flat foot, and then eventually your toes and start swimming. Well, it turns out dinosaurs do the same thing too. So, we see many dinosaurs where especially there's marks in the mud. And then you start seeing just one or two claws that they take off and swim. So we know many dinosaurs can swim. But what you're seeing here are marine reptiles. Now, these are not dinosaurs. If it lived in the ocean, if it had flippers, it wasn't a dinosaur. So the idea is that they're different branches of this family tree. And in general, um, I have to point out who they are, how they're different, and what's going on. And first of all, I'm going to point out the ichthyosaurs. So ichthyosaurs are some of the first marine reptiles known to science. Like, um, before the Mesozoic, the oceans were like full of sharks and coelacanths and all kind of lopin fish and things. And after the Permian extinction, a lot of the animals were wiped out. In fact, uh, when the Permian happened, it's estimated that 97% of life in the ocean died. So the ocean almost died entirely. So when life had to rebound in the early Triassic and Jurassic, um, sorry, early Triassic and middle Triassic, so we see it ichthyosaurs showing up, ichthyosaurs showing up. And ichthyo means fish and source means lizard because they like lizard fish. Um, they're an example of, of parallel evolution, I'm sorry, of conversion evolution, conversion evolution, because dolphins are mammals with blowholes that look like this, and ichthyosaurs are reptiles with nostrils like this, and of course sharks are fish with gills who like this. So they, they, that, that body plan, this works really well in the ocean, and ichthyosaurs are an example of that. Um, we know that they ate squid and fish and things because we find the, you know, the parts of the squid, like squids have uh, a suckers on their, you know, on their arms, and the suckers have hooks on them. So we find those hooks in their stomachs. So we know they're eating them too. So we're having an idea how their lifestyle works. We've also found about 15 of these guys, or gals I should say, with, with the babies coming out. So that's actually giving birth. So even though they're reptiles, we say it's giving birth to live young. When I say live young, there's like different levels. Um, they, it's kind of like how some sharks and rattlesnakes will like make an egg, they have a baby inside, but it just comes out so it appears to be live birth but it's not quite like a mammal with the umbilical cord attached and all that, right? So that's what we're seeing happening here. Now, Ithiosaurus, uh, Ithiosaurus in general, if that genus is really well known and really widely uh, spread out. But here we have one called Ophthalmosaurus, which was made famous in Walking with Dinosaurs, BBC, and it's known for its large eyes because it can go deeper in the water, right? They're eating squid, so squid hang out deep. Um, they are one group, Ithiosauria. Or, sorry, Another group we have are the plesiosaurs. Now the plesiosaurs are these guys here, your AKA Loch Ness monster. Um, very popular. Uh, Mary Anning, the the you know the I would say mother of paleontology. She was the um, the first professionally paid paleontologist. It's kind of a big deal. I always joke and say that people see paleontology and dinosaurs for little boys. I'm like I'm a grown man. I still like it. But also you know this woman was the first to really do it and be paid for it, which is a big deal. Um, Plesiosaurus, this is a Jurassic World one. These guys, uh, about 10 feet long, this, this particular genre, and their eyes are up, up, up above, so they're coming up below from the prey. They have sharp teeth, they have a tiny neck. They can't, like, we don't think they're like snakes that can stretch your necks out, like, you know, they're eating fish and squid, very small things. And the question, of course, is why is their body stuff like this? And it's, the, you know, the general view is like a football, so it's really, you know, maneuverable in the water, multiple fins, different kind of like rudders, you know, kind of thing. But in general, these plesiosaurs are not dinosaurs. Um, officially, I must say that I don't think they're still around. They're, they would extinct in the end of the, the Mesozoic Cretaceous period. Uh, they're, the Loch Ness Monster is not this, but yes, that's not my area, right? Um, so, the Plesiosaur group has another branch called the Pliosaur group, which is totally underappreciated. So, Pliosaurs are Plesiosaur members, family members that have short necks and giant heads. The most famous, famous of which is the Lophlorodon, which in Walking with Dinosaurs, they show this animal. It was the actual toy from that series. Um, at the time of that documentary, they estimated it to be like 80 feet long or 60 feet long, something huge. Um, we've now, they now re, we measured it, looked at different parts of it. Actually, more close to 40, which is still massive, but you know. Um, and of course, we have a scientific paper thingy or any kind of documentary. You get your, your toy-ish forms that snap and crush, but they do have huge jaws. I mean, it's really easy to point out. Um, also, plesiosaurs and pliosaurs are together. Ichthyosaurs is the other running group. Where do they come from? There's these things in the Triassic called nososaurs. We think this group led to plesiosaurs. Uh, they're like the number one. So that show Mari, you are the father, you know. So like that, we think that nososaurs like this led to this. Like, how do you get a nososaur model? 
Um, it's these safari figures, the, the tubes of like prehistoric, I think, crops, something like that, or prehistoric ocean reptiles. So, Mosasaur, that's a Plesiosaur, Ichthyosaur, still, jury's out. This is, um, I always have trouble saying the name, Tini Spondylus. I always think, whenever I see this guy, I think like Beyonce or Destiny's Child, say my name, say my name, it's Tini Spondylus. And this guy did not lead to any of these things, it just kind of came and went. Um, but again, in the mid-Triassic, the early Triassic, there's this attempt to retake the oceans and these reptiles adapt to that. So it's, it has this really long neck and these arms and it doesn't seem proportionate, but um, you know, so it's an interesting animal in its own right. But it's not in these, it's a totally different group than the marine reptiles we see in Mesozoic. It, it is Triassic, but there's Mesozoic, Jurassic, and so on. Uh, we also have crocodiles in the ocean with flippers and fins. And unfortunately, they don't, they don't make very many toys of them. You know, there's like another, another part of that little tube of croc thing. But um, the question is always, why did crocodiles survive the extinction event and dinosaurs didn't, uh, not counting birds? And a lot of crocodiles did die, actually. Um, there were some that had flippers. There were some that were marine mainly, had, you know, certain web features. And there were others that were like on land that could almost gallop, you know. So a lot of those, what we consider today weird crocs, died out. And the ones that hid in swamps and like slick slime, those guys survived, right? So here's an example of that. Now, we got to the Cretaceous period and we start seeing something in the late Cretaceous uh, called Mosasaurus. So the first Mosasaurus is Mosasaurus, that's been recognized by science. Uh, the one we all know and love is Talosaurus. Um, and again, this is my favorite model Talosaurus because it has a little second row of teeth in there making this super accurate. Uh, this one does too, actually. So the newer ones have that, a lot of my older ones don't. Um, if you want a video on Talosaurus, tell me in the, in the comments. But again, uh, big discovery here is the fin. This is, you know, they have elongated torsos. The Jurassic World Mosasaur is too truncated in the torso, which I get it. It's a movie thing. It's not science. It's a toy. But they, they're related to snakes. Uh, squam they're in the order Squamata, snakes and lizards. Um, so they're like a Komodo dragon and a python had a 40-foot baby. You know, so they have elongated torsos, long tails. Uh, new research suggests they have actually this kind of uh, more fish-like tail that the bones go down, but it goes up like this. And how do I know that? Well, we see that in Ichthyosaurus where the bones come from the vertebra, come down and go down like that. And this is just like cartilage or something. So it wouldn't be out of the question. Plus, it's more maneuverable for that kind of tail. Uh, Mosasaurus is our own branch, close to snakes and lizards. Back on the Plesiosaur branch, we know Plesiosaurus. But everyone knows Elaphosaurus, this guy here. And he's the one, or it's the one that's like 40 feet long, um, has like a 15 foot neck. So it's taking this design and extending it, literally. Uh, the idea here is if you are hunting fish and squid, and they see your giant body coming, they will swim away. If they see your body at a distance and your heads are below them, they have no idea you're coming to grab them. Uh, I have always had issue with the, the necks going up like this. If you ever see their skeletons, they have long vertebra, the later species. So I like this model personally because it's more um, like horizontal, sort of moving around like that versus the, the you know, Nessie's S-shaped neck, you know, like a raptor almost. So the Elasmosaurus is in the Plesiosaur branch of this group. Uh, Lyplorodon is early, it's like Jurassic, early Jurassic, but there is a Cretaceous uh, Pliosaur that we should all know and love called Chronosaurus. Here's an older model of it right here. It's kind of like the one from, I think, Safari, right? Safari. Oh, Carnegie. Yeah, he's in... Oh, old school. And then, of course, this newer one I have here is a jaw articulating from Collect A. It's a really huge model. And again, this is a guy that they found a plesiosaurus either in his mouth or in his stomach fossilized. So it ate like a whole, again, not a lasmosaurus size, but a whole plesiosaurus. These are terrifying animals, you know. You start hearing about um, the Predator X. It's not a mosasaur, it's a plesiosaur. These are the ones that, if you were to say, James, what's the scariest things in the ocean as far as big? Pliosaurus to me. I mean, plesiosaurs are fish and squid eaters. Ichthyosaurs are like dolphins. You know, mosasaurs are scary, but pliosaurs are terrifying. They're, you know, mosasaurs are long and you know, like snakes. These guys are just giant, crushing, killing things. Uh, there's one called Dalyrhynchus, uh, too. It's kind of smaller um, uh, pliosaur. And then I'm bringing Spinosaurus. Now, Spinosaurus is not a marine reptile. The reason I have it here, if I want to kind of contrast this, that marine reptiles, their entire lineage, live in the ocean, basically. Uh, they have flippers. Spinosaurus is the last of a family of animals that are aquatic. So think of a Spinosaurus lifestyle between a crocodile and a hippo. It's, it, it can go on land, it can go in the ocean. If these guys are on land, they die. They get stuck. You know, or at least it's been theorized that some plesiosaurus may come on land like turtles, lay eggs, and like crawl back in the ocean with their flippers. But Spinosaurus is not a marine reptile. It's a true dinosaur. And yes, the Spinosaurus family evolved towards being more aquatic, given the evidence we have. 
Um, it's not a marine reptile. These guys have flippers. Their hands are like this, fossil like whales and dolphins. And speaking of that, it's not that they're wiped out in the Cretaceous extinction that dolphins and whales show up later on. They replace them like they replace many of these early sharks and fish. So that's marine reptiles in a nutshell. The pliosaurs, plesiosaurs, mosasaurs, the crocod crocodile morphs, ichthyosaurs are the main groups. The rest of mosasaurs and this guy here are just kind of like offshoots here and there. But that's a major overview of these guys. So that being said, I'll see you next week.